Hi guys, welcome back to Pamela Gropey Art. Today we are going to paint this snowman couple. And it's really easy and beginner friendly and you will really enjoy this fun little tutorial. Also at the end of the video there is uh, a photo of a sign I made for my front porch using the snowman. Now you can personalize this, make the scarves, earmuff any color you like, um, change out the buttons, you could actually make them you know lumps of coal, whatever you want, make it yours. So let's get painting. Rock and roll. So to get started here, you see this is a, a formally used, I started a design on it and I didn't like it. So I gessoed over it, but it wasn't enough to cover. And since I'm gonna be doing a white, I tested for these snow people here drawn on. I could tell it wasn't gonna cover it. So I need to cover the entire canvas with a darker color. That will hide the background and then we could start fresh. So what I'm gonna go with is a navy blue or uh, look at me blue, whatever I need to use up a lot of times is <laughs> what I pick because I'm gonna go over it. So I'm just gonna squirt on some paint and I'm gonna have both of these colors on here just because this one is at the end and I need to use it up. And I have a nice wide brush. This is the Low Cornell White Nylon. This is the three inch one because I want to cover this quickly and um, the best way to do that is with a large brush and a lot of paint. So I'm just gonna pull this on here. This is a well-worn brush because um, I've used it a lot. It's left been soaking in paint. It's been, you know, abused terribly. But for what I use it for, it still works. These little screws are starting to come out, but these are pretty cheap inexpensive. So um, the whole pack I think is like five or six dollars or was. I'm not sure I haven't bought them in a year or so. So I'm not certain that it still holds true. So I'm running low on paint, starting to drag, add some more. I'm really liking the coloration in here. I'm sorry for the glare. We get a lot of, um, I have the light. Let me get a different light on for you. I don't think this helps the glare, but it um, just adds more. <laughs> so anyways, um, I want to add some more of that true blue as well. It's, the paint is wet, so it reflects the light. I need to get a, a easel where it's standing up so the paint, the paint, the light isn't shining directly down on it. So that was Look At Me Blue and Navy Blue in the Plaid Folk Art Colors. Let me get this going. And I'll paint the sides. This is just brown craft paper that I get and put on the surface. So you see how that covered the, um, it was a bicycle on here. And, uh oh, I just ended up getting out true blue. Huh, that wasn't the one I wanted. I wanted my navy blue. It's okay, it'll all work. That's what happens when I get going and I have too many bottles on my table. All right. I just wanted coverage, and now we're going to let this dry. Sometimes I have like a little fan, a small fan, and I turn it on and I lay this in front of it. And it it's a time saver compared to standing over it with a blow dryer. Because then I could go on and maybe base paint or gesso some other canvases. Multitasking. So there we have the coverage on our canvas. We'll come back and we will start with the background behind the snow people. They're pretty big, so um, we're not going to need a lot of background, but I am going to do a little element that is kind of fun. 
This is where we are going to have the moon glow. I'm going to start out with a three quarter inch flat brush, some wicker white, and I'm going to just paint a circle, plenty of paint for that moon. I need more paint on my palette. I want it to stay a touch wet, kind of low on wicker white. I need to get me a new bottle because we're going to be using a lot in this painting. So if you wanted to use like an ivory white or even add just a hint of yellow to this to give it more of a yellow glow, you can. For expedience sake, I am just going to Leave it wicker white. So I have lots of paint in there. It's very thick. Doesn't matter that we have some dark spots showing because this is the moon. So I'm going to go into my navy. And we're going to come outside of the white line and we're going to work our way into the moon. Go all the way around. And then it's just going to blend in to our moon. Don't overwork it. Add a little bit more of the navy on your brush. And just keep working outwards. Well, there's a little bit of extra white. When I pressed hard, it came off. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Because you can just go over it with more and it gives it some radiating rays. So now the snow woman is going to be here, snowman's going to be here. But I want this to come out this direction. So I'm going to. Keep going. I'm just adding navy. Whatever's coming off my brush of the white is what's in the brush because I didn't clean it after um, using the white. And I'm not worried about over here because here's the snow woman's head. I'm going to just go over here with this because the snowman, some of it's going to show. And I'm out of navy on my palette. So I'm going to get a little bit more. That's true blue. Let me get navy must be up here. Yes, navy blue. More navy. Just keep pulling it down. In the arcing motion as if it's just radiating out from that center moon or the center of the moon. If you want to blend some of those whites in that came off on the brush, go right ahead. And the others I'm just going to leave. And that, my friends, is your glowing moon. I'm just going to drag. My brush is now pretty dry. I've worked out most of the navy, and I'm just smoothing some of these a little bit outward. And there we have it. So there is our glowing moon. If you want to come in later and add a touch more white in the center, you can. We're not going to worry about getting this moon looking very realistic. This is just a very loose interpretation. Now we want this to dry before we proceed to the next step. So I'm going to rinse my brush, get it dried out, and then I will come back and I will draw in placement of our snow people. So now this part here is dry. The moon, because it's so thick, is still wet. But this part is dry. So I can kind of chalk in my snow people. Nice big round head. One thing about the chalk is you can wipe it off if um, you don't like what you've drawn. 
No, we want them to be a little bit wider. We want them to be nice, chunky snow people. Nice, chunky snow people. And then this is going to be the girl. So she's going to be a little bit shorter. Let's see. We'll put her down here. She's a nice, petite little snow girl. Snow woman. And... Well, like that. Her spot right there. So let's get, let's see, oh, I'm looking at them. Hmm. Maybe I want her a little bit rounder on the head. So there is our snow people. We drew on the snow people. And now I'm going to underpaint. I was telling you that. I, um, I'm running low on white, so I'm going to underpaint with a lighter color. It's just a spare color I have. This one is seashell pink. Um, you, if you have plenty of white, don't worry about doing this step, but I just wanted to show you how I do it to bring the lightness up. White going over a dark color won't be as bright as I wish it to. So I'm just gonna bring in this pretty pink color and I'm gonna underpaint my snow people. You could do this with a lighter blue, you could do this with a gray, whatever you desire, and it shall work. And um, it just gives it a bit of brightness. I need to reach for some more. And it's just one of those mini tricks you can utilize in acrylic painting. So even though this is the boy, he's going to have a pink undercoat too. And you see, I leave a little gap here between them. Right here, they're overlapping because they're standing very close together, making sure I'm not flinging paint on myself. And just evenly spread that. Give your snow people's heads an undercoat too. It's all well and good. So it just brings up the color brightness before I go in with my whites. Now on my prior or other snowman painting tutorial, I have a small one. I use a scruffy brush and it gives it texture. And I love that texture effect, but um, that takes a lot of time on a surface on a snowman this large. Now, as we uh, come in with the white, put in a coat or two, we can actually go in with a sponge or a scruffy brush and go ahead and add that texture. Let me see, get them, her two side, sides even. She's gonna have a muffler, so. There we go. I decided I didn't want her head quite as big, so I can come in later and wash off that chalk pencil. So this is good. This is a good undercoat for our snow people. And we'll let that dry before we come in with any other colors. Make sure it's thin enough so it dries fairly quickly. So I'm gonna take a blow dryer to this and get it going quickly. I have a piece of sponge here, you see? If you watched any of my videos or my former videos in my truck painting with the fall trees, I used a sponge for the trees. This works very well to put texture on our snow people. And I just wad it up into a little shape there. I pounce it in my paint and then I just bring it on in here and pounce that color on. 
Just pat it in there. Does a good job with coverage. And just gives it a really pretty texture. And if some of the pink shows through, I'm not really concerned about it. But if I did, I would just come back in with another bit of a layer uh, a bit later and call it all good. So I'll continue putting this textured white. Actually, this is called warm white because I was, like I said, I'm saving my wicker white. I need to um, put it in order for some. It's just something I haven't done. But the warm white works just fine. And to bring in some shadowing along the base, I'm going to go in with some blue. You can go in with a gray, you can go in with a touch of black, but I'm going to go in with a touch of the navy blue. Since I have it out, I have a little bit on my palette. Oh, I'm getting some glare here. One moment. And let me see, is my palette in the camera? There we go. We got that spot in there. So right here is the navy. I'm going to put, I'm going to do it on the edge of my sponge. You see right here, I got a little bit. I'm going to pounce it off a little bit so I see what I'm doing. I want to lighten that color. So this is still wet. So I'm just going to bring in some around the base. Real light. Real light. And right along the edge. If you want to add more of the warm white to make it more faint, then do so. And let's bring that on in there. Now I'm not going to continue my white with the blue on here because then I would get more blue in that area. But I was just showing you how to do that. So I'll just get another piece of sponge. Now I got my sponges at dollar store and then just shredded them, not shredded them, but tore them up to make these shapes. I just snip it with a scissors, snip it with a scissors and then tear them. So I've got to get some more warm white out of my palette. And I will continue with my snow woman. I will speed this up so that you don't have to watch all of this because I'm going to do the same with my snowman. Some of it you see comes off the edge there. That's fine. That's all texture. Lighten up this a bit. Just checking to see if I picked up any of that blue, which I did. So that means a clean sponge. Let me check and see if it's going to come off. Oh, not enough to worry. Okay. So her muffler is going to come right here. So I'm not worried about getting her neck too thick because that's going to be covered by that muffler. Okay. So I want to create a bit of roundness on her head or at least a some, a bit of shadowing, and so I, I picked up some of the blue that's already on the palette, so it's just very faint, and that's going to come right along here. If I wasn't going to have a muffler, this would create the division between her body and her face, but just going to shadow just that little bit of a portion. So to go on to him, since I have that blue on this sponge, I'm going to go in get another one. It really works great to um, have plenty of these pieces of sponge. And that way you can um, keep sw switching them out. You do not want to use a wet sponge. It just creates muddy, muddy paint. So I'm going to finish up this snowman the same way I did her. And I will rush through that.
Now you can take it around the edges. That way you don't need to frame this. This can sit on a shelf or what have you if the design continues around the edges. So there we've got our snowman. I'll continue around the edges. You don't have to watch how that is pretty boring. And then we'll come back and I will shadow him. Well, I, I could shadow him right now since I have the blue out. And I'm just gonna go in the corner of the blue, a little bit on my brush, brush on my sponge, and I'm just gonna kind of pounce it out. I don't want it too dark. This is pretty wet still, so I'm gonna give him a bit of a shape. He kind of goes off the um, canvas, so I'm not gonna worry about him being too. And I'm, he's gonna kind of overlap her, so I'm gonna put along here. Get more of the warm white, blend that out. Being careful, I tilted the sponge up when I went into there so I didn't get that blue there. Okay, so I have a little too much pink showing through for my taste. So I'm gonna let these dry and I'm gonna go back over it with another layer to kind of hide those that under color from coming through. And now you can see why with the pink, um, it's easier to get coverage with the lighter color paint. Cause if it was the dark underneath there, you'd really have to put on um, maybe three layers to get the depth of color that you're looking for. Snow, snow. So my snow people are mostly dry. Now this is the time I'm gonna bring in my wicker white, my bright white. And I'm not gonna completely cover my snow people. I am going to, I have some dry sponges. I'm going to add another layer because that will cover the spaces where the pink is showing through. It'll add a brightness. You see how much whiter the wicker white is? You wouldn't have known that unless I layered it on there. Now I could have done two layers of the wicker white. And I think I got another bottle over there. Wicker white, if you can find it in the larger uh, eight ounce, is it eight ounces they come in? Anyways, the larger containers, that's the way I would go because it's just a color that I use a lot. Um, titanium white's another one that you could get a big bottle of, because it's just used with a lot of things. I use it almost in every painting. So I can leave some of the other showing through, the uh, warm white, because that will give it some texture. And you see, even though I'm going over the blue down there, it's not covering it completely. So you still have that shading effect. See how you use quite a bit. I'm gonna leave this over here upside down so I can get the last bit out because I still got Miss Snowman to go. You could brush this on. The big brush, just brush it on. Might be quicker. You just don't get the texture. I might have said that already, but sometimes I forget what I have said. Okay, here's Mr. Snowman. Now Miss Snowman, especially up here on her face, around the edges. We're gonna dab in that color. That white. They say white is not a color. It is the absence of color. Is that black? Like I said, I'm not too worried about her having such a thick neck. If I wanted to put her on a diet and um, bring it down, let her, I could bring in the dark blue, the navy blue, and go over that a little and, and slim her down. That's called negative painting. And that's a good trick to learn when you've made an error in judgment. Got white all over my hand now on something. But like I said, she's going to have a muffler on, so it's not going to 
matter. If I was going to do just a simple bow on her or something, I would come in and make her a touch slimmer. There. I'll worry about the shadowing of who overlaps who later. I had him overlapping her because he's turned this way, kind of facing her. So maybe I will. Maybe she's kind of um, overlapping him. Let me pass out. I'm good the white and I'm pouncing some of the blue into it. I don't want it to be too stark white or too dark, I mean. So this is so where her tummy is kind of coming over him. And I will shadow on his side. There we go. too dark. Move my sponge where it's lighter. Blend it out. Blend it out or add more white. No, oh, it's good. It's all, it's blending out. All good. Now since the moon's coming this way, this side of his head should be shadowed. And this is where... Anyways. She's casting a shadow over him. I'm trying to take a look at what's going on. And I have a shadow around her head over here. Alrighty. It's all good. A little more down here on him. More white. Bringing up some shadow on him. That blue is just very, very intense. In the overall scheme of things, this will blend in well. Okay. She's going off over there, so we're not going to worry about too much. Okay, enough of that sponge. Now again, we have to let it dry. This is where having two projects running side by side sometimes comes in handy, because you could set this aside to dry, and then you can come back to it. Or we can do like up here you see a little bit of speckling from the splatter of the sponge we could do some more fly specking and make some snowflakes in the sky or it could be stars whichever you prefer to call them and excuse me instead of just a, the plain white which you're welcome to use I would go ahead and use um, something like a vintage white Something that adds a touch of yellow to the color. Oh, it's vintage white. And that um, makes them shine a little brighter. Now, you can have a mix of the vintage white with the white. This is vintage white. And I want to make this a little bit, um, a little bit less thick. I want to dilute it. <laughs> Don't know why I couldn't find that word. And I'm looking for my toothbrush. Well, I'm not seeing it, so I'm gonna go with, this is a low Cornell tin. It's an old, you see how it's not holding a very good chisel edge? I keep these on hand for doing things like fir trees, etc. that I don't want a sharp chisel edge on. I want them to be a little looser, so I'm gonna get this paint watered down a bit, and I will add some, oh, 
put the lid on the wicker white. See, it's at the bottom of my bottle. I could just let that come out. Now I'm getting it wet, inky. Can be called inky. A little wetter. I want a little. Now I don't want too much in my brush when I go to do this. And how I do this is many times I run my thumb across it. But this time I'm going to run it across a paintbrush handle. And you see how it's throwing out just some splatters. And there you have your bit of stars in the background. And if you want to make one that's twinkling, then you come back in with a liner, a very fine liner. This one is a Royal Majestic 10 aught, and I have it ready to go. I'm pulling it through the inky paint, making sure I have a nice tight tip, and then I will make very thin little star twinkling up there. Or you can make it a snowflake. So you do that as you come in with, you make this a Y, and you make this a Y. What would be fun is using sparkly paint, glittery paint for this, and they have some available. And then you can just pull a little lines between, and you have yourself a twinkling little snowflake. I have another tutorial on snowflakes, I do believe. I'll show you one that I also did. See some on these, this lettering. This is a welcome sign snowman. I did videos and everything and I never did finish and put it up. I need to do that. Sometimes you put a little dot. Whoops, got that one a little hard, but you could add a few of those if you like. So there's our snowflake. I was just dinking around while I was in this dry. So I'm gonna have to um, take a break, let this dry and we'll come back and we will add their buttons on their tummies. So let's put on their buttons. I am going to give them little heart buttons, and I'm going to do that in alizarin crimson. You can do this in any red. You can do it in black if you prefer, but that's just my choice for these buttons. Now I'm have a number 12 flat. I'm going to dampen it a bit, and I'm going to load it with my alizarin crimson and I think maybe he will be more forward facing and she will be more side facing so I'm going to make his buttons let me see I'll have his muffler here so I'll do his button his heart buttons like right here so what I'm doing is just doing a circle and then I'll pull it down to a point to create the heart shape. If I want a little rounder, I can do that. Just little heart buttons. Big heart buttons, whatever you want to call it. And
Don't try to be perfect. Just pull them together. Nice little heart shapes. And you can let them dry. Let's go do hers. Now she's going to be facing him. So they're going to be a little bit over this direction. Now, if you feel better drawing in a heart and then painting them on, go right ahead. And that might help for sizing and whatever. Many times I'll do that just because I can tend to grow. See, that one is just way too big. I don't like how big it is. So it's not in proportion to other things. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. What I do, it will leave a stain. Red will leave a stain. I could go over it with white, you know, a little negative painting, what have you. I'm getting a couple paper towels. Getting them damp. I should say a paper towel. And I'm just going to wipe that clear. Now the one thing about acrylics is there, you really can clean up after yourself. Now with a... Um, oils you can come in and scrape it off with a camper tool now it left a stain but that's okay if i want to completely correct it i will go over that with a touch more white i'm going to go ahead and let these dry and i will come back and anything that's left over uh, what i mean is of the red that i don't want I'm going to go back over it with white later. So let's, I'm gonna make sure I keep it. Oops, my water, my water. My brush has too much water in it. I'm drying it off. I got a little water on there. Don't you love it when I make mistakes and that shows how it can happen. So I'm gonna draw my heart because that will keep me in line. as far as keeping it to a better size for her. Much better. A little bit lower on the plane because her wrap is gonna be here. So we'll do the other one just a little bit right down here. Hopefully my head's not getting in the camera. And I will just draw it This one's a little bit longer and narrower. Well, I like fat hearts, fat little hearts. And that's what gets me in trouble because I keep growing it. Okay, there is her button. Now I'm gonna go over that later with some more just to give it some real opacity. Now around that is dry. I got my brush extremely clean. And I can go back with some white and go over that portion that is um, stained a bit. So I'm just gonna open up my container, make sure I have my brush good and dry, getting it out of the lid, just around that just pick up a little where I don't want it and we got those fixed got those fixed can uh, Increase the opacity of the white later if you wish. And there we have. Now her buttons are pretty much doing good on her. So let's go with the eyes. I'm going to draw in 
where I think I want them, or I'm gonna place them. Now that will be black, licorice black. Licorice is my favorite black in folk art. There's pure black, lamp black. I always gravitate to licorice, I don't know why. So, let's see where her little eyes will be. She's gonna be looking up at him. So I like oval eyes. I'm just marking where I'm gonna put them and create some little ovals. She's looking over towards him. And he's kind of looking towards her. So we'll make his eyes also not directly in the center. I'll show you a picture of a snowman sign I made last year. I sold it, and um, so I don't have it anymore, but I don't know if those, no, I think they're fine. I was gonna say they might be a little low on his face, but I think they're fine. All right, just simple oval shapes, nothing too, Nothing too symmetrical, you don't have to. Uh, I'm looking at them, I'm thinking maybe I want them a little bit larger around. Maybe a little bit larger. I'm taking it slow because you can always make them bigger, but making them smaller again is a whole nother ball game if you know what I mean. But you could do it. It's not that you couldn't. All right, we'll leave them be. Now to make her look more feminine, we could add a little bit of eyelashes on hers, just a touch, or we can leave it be. We'll decide on that later. So let me if I do the carrot now, because the carrot may touch the eyes, maybe not. No, this one may, because I'm going to have them looking that way. That I just don't want it to drag across the black. So we could do their little mouth, do some dots for the mouth. And you could do this with a stylus. A lot of times I use the back side of the paintbrush. And what I mean is this right here. It's stained obviously from doing that very thing with on others. So I'm gonna put out a little puddle of black because it's gonna have black for the mouth. It's getting low on my black. So let's, and I dot it off to see the sizing. And I just I'm gonna same with her, she's gonna have a little smile too. Little snowman smile. And those are dry. Now I'm going to bring in just a touch of shadowing on these. So I'm going to get out a um, bit of berry wine. It's a very good shadow color for red. And I'm going to double load with the alizarin crimson and some berry wine. You can see I'm just blending it in, little berry wine a lot of alizarin and crimson. And I'm just gonna go along the outside of the one edge with the berry wine. 
just blend it down in. It doesn't have to be perfectly done. Some of it can fade off. You're just adding a hint of shadow along that side of your heart button. And we'll do the same on hers. Hers is still a little bit wet. Just as long as I don't pick up the paint. You can if it's too wet, still it may pick up the paint. But it didn't, so we're okay. Rinse your brush. Dry it well. Let me get this out of the way. And then you can come back and highlight a little bit. Um, let me first, I want to make sure this side's good and opaque. Okay, test, 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 test. We are live. Okay, so we were shadowing our hearts when my camera turned off. And I'm going to now highlight them using the same number 12 brush, which is pretty much cleaned out. I'm going to, I could use apple red, or you could add a little orange to the alizarin crimson. But let me see, this apple red I think is a, I don't know, let's see how well it does. Or let me see, engine red. Let me get a touch of the orange, just to be on the safe side. Okay, here's the apple red. This is alizarin crimson, and then apple red. And I'm going to bring, it's not enough of a highlight, not enough contrast. So I'm going to bring a touch of orange in there to bring a highlight to that side of the hearts. Just a touch. If you used white, you could put in a, just a touch of white. Um, it has a tendency to turn pink. I guess I could do it after it had dried. And I got I kind of get into the white on that one. So that's why it's showing so orange there, but it's not a big deal. So I'll show you what it looks like with a touch of white. And it may not matter. Like if I let that dry, then come in with a, just a hint of white. That will work too. So I'm just going to get a touch of white. My brush has got a little too much water in it. And then I'm going to go like that. Since it already has the orange on there, it's preventing it from turning pink. Just give it a little brightness on that side. I could do the same. The eyes are still pretty wet. I'm gonna, I should get a smaller brush to fit within that area. I'm gonna go for my number 10, number 10 flat. Get it damp, dry it well, and then I'm gonna try to keep my head out of the camera now. And I'm gonna, I don't want it stark white. I want it to be faded out. So I brush it out onto that, and then I'm just gonna bring a touch of light to that side of the outside edges of their eyes, just a hint. And then a spark of light where they're looking. at each other. And so there you have their eyes. I think I am going to add just a hint with a liner. This is a 10 aught, 10 zero. So it has a 10 and a slash and a zero. This is a Royal Majestic liner. And I'm going to get some black 
rolled in it. I had a little bit of water, so it's making it a little bit watery, and I'm pulling it to a sharp point. And I'm going to be very careful, and I'm just going to give her a little hint of eyelashes. on her eyes. Make her a little more feminine. Very faint. I guess I drug my hand across there because I got a little black drug out over there on their eyes, on his eyes. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So now I, the most of that is dry. I'm going to pull in the carrot. I'm going to use the number 10 flat again and some pure orange. Let me get my remove out of the way. Pure orange. It's plaid folk art. This one's a multi-surface. It comes in both multi-surface and the plain, I don't know, or original, whatever you want to call it, of the folk art colors. So I'm loading up my brush and I'm going to have kind of a rounded end. We're not going to give him too big of a carrot nose. We're going to keep it on the smaller side. I'm doing it towards the side because he's looking towards her. And then we'll do the same. We'll keep hers on the smaller side. We don't want a big snozzola on this sweet little gal. Pull it to a point and bring it back. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want a straight line. Carrots are never perfectly straight. They got little bumps and lumps in, in them. And there is her little carroty nose. Just a tad longer. There. So orange again is not very opaque. We can bring, uh, come back in and when it's dry and give it a second coat. And see. I think he needs a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger carrot. Both of them do. It needs to be a little bit bigger. Start small and then graduate up bigger. much better much better so while that's drying and before we go to give it another coat I will come in and I'll bring their little mufflers in so it depends on what you can choose any color you want I am gonna go with true blue on his because I love true blue and that's gonna be the base color I will go ahead and use my number. I could use a three quarter inch because they're they're pretty fat. Use a three quarter inch brush. Test test. So we will use the three quarter inch brush to paint in the muffler. We're going to start with him. So I'm going to bring it I think I'll bring it this way. Make it nice and wide. Just press that brush. Now I'm coming like this and curving gives it like it's wrapping around his neck. Give it a little curve there. We want this to be a nice fat scarf around his neck. 
And that way he's kept warm. Don't matter if you go over his mouth a little bit. So we're all good. Get that wrapped around him. Make it opaque here, it's kind of skipping. It's a little dry and dragging. All right, so what color are we gonna paint hers? We can give her a nice bright pink can make it, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I ended up choosing Fire Engine Red. I had considered a pink and I thought, no, these are really bright. This is a bright one. So we are going to go with the Engine Red. And, um, it's a little bit different tone than the Alizarin Crimson. And it'll probably take me a few coats. Now I'll show you a trick to making this a little more opaque. Because you see how it's not covering over the blue there. And that is you add in a opaque yellow, which um, yellow ochre is for the base coat. And now I am going to Give it a mix. Here's the yellow ochre, and here is my engine red. And it just makes it opaque for the base coat. I've got it mixed in well enough, and it gives it a little more opacity. Now I'll go over it a second time to brighten up the red because of course the yellow ochre is going to dull it. And we want it to be bright. I'm not, not too bright. This is making it a very dull red, but A lot of times I have used like a burnt umber, but that really dulls it way more than I had wanted. Burnt umber has a lot of red in it. I want this to be a nice fat scarf. And I need to let it dry. I'm starting to pull up paint in little areas. Like right there. I don't want to. See the little mark there? It's time to let it dry. So I think I'll give him some alizarin crimson earmuffs. I'm going to start out just by creating the earmuffs. So these are going to go alongside his head. This one's kind of turned away. So this one is going to be just a part of an earmuff. a half a one and then this one will be you'll have a little bit more of it but it's kind of going off of the surface so we'll do it like this you don't want too far in and there is his muffs this one should have probably been smaller since it's further away so we'll put this one bigger Little round earmuffs. And we'll give them a little bit of a highlight on it later. Maybe a touch of 
shadow close to his head with that berry wine. Just a touch. Give it some dimension. Keep it inside the line here. So I have to use a different one because once you get these wet, um, it's just a super muddy if you try to go in and use it again wet. So I have a second one for her earmuffs. And instead of um, pulling out another color, I think I'll go ahead and just use the blue, true blue for her earmuffs. And just paint. She's turned this way, so it will just be a little piece of it showing there. Probably got it too far up. And then over here, you see more of it because her face is really turned. Give it a touch of shadow at the base, which I'll just touch in a touch of black. Just a touch. It's so blue against that, but I'm not gonna worry about shrinking it down in size. Now I will bring in a touch of white. Let me see if that white, oh, that white's still good. I need a little bit more. And we'll give it a touch of highlight to the top. Are you still with me? I'm pouncing it out. I want it to be softened. Softened on that edge. And then we'll give it a little touch of highlight. Right there. Since this is still wet, it's really blending in, which is good. And now we need to highlight his. I'm gonna have to get a third because I didn't do the highlight. I was afraid it would do it too pink, but I think it'll be fine. So, like I said, I have a whole collection of these type brushes. And I'm gonna go into the alizarin crimson and the white. And I'll just highlight up here. The rest of it's kind of off on the off of the canvas. Well, I pulled down too much shadow. I'm wiping out the brush, wiping it out. And I'm gonna go in just the lizard and crimson. Maybe I'll go into it. Or was that the, uh-oh. Was it that engine red? That's what it was. Or was that the engine red? See, now I'm losing track. It doesn't matter. It all works. Okay, if I want to deepen the red on this one, I can come back later. I'm starting to pull the, the paint up. Now to create our little muff attachment. So, because this is such a dark color, I will do that with a white. I'm going to do it with my number 10 flat on the chisel edge. You could do it with a liner brush. You could do it with however you feel works best for you. And we're just gonna follow the outline of his head. Outline of his head to it. Try to do it in a single line instead of breaking it up like that. And the same with hers, just a line. You're going for an effect. We're not going for realism here. These are the funkiest little snowmen you ever did want to meet. I'm going to put his little stripes on his 
the muscle. I'm going to follow like the outline of just a bit of a curve. Just a bit of a curve. Just space them out. And then we'll have the little knot here and the trailing on that. And now hers is not dry yet, so I can't go anywhere with that one. So I've still got white in my brush. So if there's anywhere I want to touch up, I can do that now. Use up that white. And just pull some, clean up some edges. I think I made this heart a little smaller. So I can cover it even more. That's all good. So let us begin on, not begin, let's finish up her scarf, her pretty little muffler. And I'm gonna get my three quarter inch flat brush. I'm rinsing it out because it had some soap in it that I left in it overnight to um, reshape it. I have a whole tutorial on my blog on how I clean my brushes. Now this brush I have had since 2016 and um, I if I keep them clean, well cleaned, then they last me for a very long time and they're not super expensive. So I'm getting out the engine red onto my palette. Now remember we undercoated with the yellow ochre mixed with the engine red. Or was it, oh it was alizarin crimson, huh? Well, either one. And I just wanna bring the brightness back up because the yellow tends to make it a little muddy, but it also adds to the opacity and you want it opaque. So we're just getting that all brushed in there. And we can come back in with apple red to give it a little more brightness. I'm wanting to pull this right here. Now this is where the little knot's gonna be on her scarf. So I'm content with that. And I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm going to work on his scarf. So his was true blue. So while the other one is drying, while hers is drying, I am going to work on his. And I am going to do true blue. And then I'm going to get a touch of navy blue. And see if I can do this in one stroke or if I have to come back in and um, do it. I like one stroke because you don't have to keep going back in but we'll see how it works. I'm going to load mostly with the true blue on my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to side load some of the navy and then I'm going to start right here and I'm going to pull across and then down. And I'm getting a dry brush so I'm going to have to reload. Reload with the uh, the navy and see it creates the shadow. Well, I got a little wavy, but that's okay. They wave in the wind. The shadow right there it might be, not be enough, but we'll wait until it dries of it coming up and over. And it gives it a depth of color there. So I'm going to continue on over here. We make it a little wider and it comes down and maybe has a fringe. Now the edge is a little dry there, so I'm going to take the corn edge, chisel edge of my brush and just bring that down. 
So we will wait for this to dry and I'll see how that shadow came out or if I need to go over it underneath of it a little bit to give it some shading right there, which I probably will shade right along there where it's um, overlapping. So we'll let that dry. And stop fiddling with it. And then we can also add the stripes on his. So hers, I'm gonna get the blow dryer and I'm going to hit it really quick. Now we're going to uh, do her scarf like his. His is nearly dry, but I'm going to get out the alizarin crimson. Isn't that what I did? Or I'm just gonna use the engine red. I'm not gonna worry about it. You can use either one, alizarin crimson, engine red. And maybe a little berry wine for the edge. Like his had the navy blue, hers will have the berry wine. So I'm, I'm loading with the engine red and side loading with the berry wine. And I am going to do the same except I'm going to go this way instead of, maybe I won't, maybe I'll just go this way. So it has a little, no. Forgive me. And I just bring it down. I'm going to see how that's not opaque at all. That's why in the original I added the yellow ochre. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Because you know how to do it. I'm not going to demo that. This stuff look like it's coming up and going over. I keep getting a bigger tip. So I want to add a little bit more shadowing right there. And then we'll shadow underneath it. So hers is coming down too. That's a little bit more of a dip than the other one, but that's okay. It'll all work out good. I'm not so I'm going to shadow underneath his scarf. I haven't put his um, design on there yet, but we're going to go ahead and shadow. I have floating medium. This is my number 12 flat. And I'm just going to pick up some of that navy and make a very transparent navy. And then I'm just going to pull it along the outside edge of that area and it just shadows right there and right here where it overlaps the other. If you want to carry it further down, it walked too far over in my brush. So I'm rinsing up my brush. I'm going to reload and just get right on the edge. You see where it's on the edge and not all the way across the brush. And then I'm going to go ahead just because I'm going to want to. I'm going to shadow it all the way down. And there we have the little bit of shadow there. And we're going to shadow underneath. Just give them a little bit of dimension. Now it's not a stark line, so a little area is darker, some's lighter, but that gives him a little bit of shadow. We could do the same with the red, except we do it with a burgundy. You could do this with asphaltum, a brown, whatever color you want to shadow with. Let's see, we'll pull it underneath there. I don't know if I've got enough on my brush. underneath where it comes over and then we'll bring it on down. I'm trying to keep my head out. Got my head in it on the last video. Just a touch of a shadow. If you get too much, brush it out, work it out. We're going to have a little fringe there, but we're going to have it be a little bit different color. And I need to come along underneath. I rinsed out my brush before I did it. Probably needed rinsing anyway. Sometimes it 
walks too far over, which I do, I have it too far over in that one. I always load first with my floating medium, and then I'm going to pull that shadow, walk it along there. I'm not worried about it being perfect. There, that's fine. She has a little bit of a shadow too. I'm still waiting for her scarf to dry. He's got a little bit on his to dry before I continue uh, with the decoration on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put another coat on the nose, the carrot nose, because it's uh, not opaque. And I want it to have a little more depth of color. So there we're bringing in another coat of orange. Make it a little bit more opaque. Okay, so back into my floating medium. And here's the burnt umber. It's time, I think, to get out a new palette. But we're almost done here. Make sure it's very thin. I'm gonna put my brush up on the edge, the corner, so I'm not getting too much. And I'm just gonna shade along the bottom of the carrot. Now that the orange is still dry, I mean, it's still wet, so it may blend in there a little bit. So now they have some dimension to their little nose, their carroty nose. a little bit rounder in the back. Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to get out the blow dryer. Well, that little part is dry. I think I can put another coat of red on there. I tend to get in a hurry, so... Um, Take your time, don't get in a hurry. That looks like it's pretty dry. So let's go in the white, wicker white. And the stripes are gonna be going this way on his, on the um, scarf here. So we're just gonna bring in his stripes from the edge. I give them a little bit of a curve. You don't have to, you can go straight across if you like. I'm gonna give it a line across for the bottom. And it's gonna have white fringe with the blue. And I'll come in and add a little bit more blue fringe. It's not coming clear to the end, so I'm gonna pull it from this side over. That one's kind of wonky, but he's got, it's twisting or something. Okay, so for her design on her little muffler, I'll have to decide on what I wanna do. Let's make it super simple. Let us put just some polka dots on her muffler. I'm gonna go for white, just white polka dots. He's got stripes, she can have polka dots. And that will just be fine and dandy. So here I have, this is the base of the number 10, or is this a 12, this is a 12 flat brush. And you just put some dots.
see, there's no rhyme or reason. Let me just put some dots on her little muffler. And then we get some dots coming down. They don't have to be uniform in size. Together there. Okay, now she's all dotty. So I need to finish up the fringe. Maybe I'll give her some little red fringe. Hers is wiggly while well, his is straight. Add a bit of navy blue in there, mix it up. And there is his fringe. If you want to add another star, this one looks like it's just out of place all by itself. Then let's add another star. Let me get this as skinny as possible. And I just do some lines. Try to keep it light. bit of a Y on every other one. It's getting a little gloppy. And then put a dot on the top of the opposite one. Not opposite one, the one in between, just above it. A little dot and put a dot in between the Y. There's many ways you could do this. You could do a Y lower down and what have you. So there you have another star. You can also do a star like this. We're just pulling out, radiating it out from a center spot. That one's not flowing. I need a little more water in my brush. And there you have a couple of extra little stars. Oh, I'm kind of off the, not in the camera enough, huh? No, I guess I was. Alrighty, so here you have your snowman couple with scarves in the moonlight with a few snowflakes. That's not a star, those are snowflakes. Sorry. I get all discombobulated. <laughs> These are supposed to be snowflakes, not stars. So forgive my faux pas there. So I hope you enjoyed painting a snow couple with me and please do share what you've painted along with me on my Facebook page. I have a private Facebook page for uh, people to share their paintings that they have done from my tutorials and I would love to see your work. I will see you in the next video.